Welcome to the Franklin County presentation on Good Deeds, how planning now can save time and money in the future. We're here to inform you about affirmative steps that you can take to simplify the transfer of certain assets after your death. Presenting today will be myself on behalf of the probate court. My name is Kelly Green and I'm the court's chief magistrate. You will also hear from Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy, the Franklin County Clerk of Courts, and Daniel J. O'Connor, the Franklin County Recorder. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about the probate court. The probate court has jurisdiction to hear cases such as estates, trusts, guardianships, adoptions, and also some specialized areas such as name changes and birth corrections. Most times when people are coming to the probate court, they're coming because something has happened. A loved one has passed or is no longer able to make their own decisions. While we are always here willing and able to help those individuals who need our services, there are affirmative steps you can take today to minimize the need to be in the probate court in the future. You may be asking yourself, why is planning for the future something that you need to think about now? It's important to plan in order to make sure that your wishes are known and that your property is distributed in the way that you wanted. Without any planning, the law decides what happens to your property, and the law is only concerned about a potential heir's legal relationship to you, and personal relationships don't come into play. It can also be a lot more cost effective to do planning now and save the cost of a full estate. And finally, Planning now helps simplify the transfer process for your loved ones. So what can you do now? You can take steps to have certain assets held jointly with the intended recipient, or you can have transfer on death designations added to particular assets. For example, real estate and bank accounts can be held jointly with rights of survivorship. And it's that survivorship language that allows the asset to transfer directly to the co-owner upon your death. Transfer on death designations can be added to real estate and motor vehicles. Payable on death designations can be added to bank accounts, stocks, bonds, and other financial assets. And you can designate a beneficiary for life insurance, investment, and retirement accounts. For ways to add these designations to financial accounts, stocks, bonds, and life insurance, reach out directly to the financial institution and ask for their policy. But keep watching this Good Deeds presentation for ways to add those designations to real estate and motor vehicles. What are some other steps that you can take now to plan for the future? You can create and execute a will and while you are not required to have an attorney in order to create a will, I will caution you that there are many state-specific requirements that are often not found when you do an internet search. You can designate a power of attorney for your health care and or financial needs. These are often two separate documents, and you can select either the same individual as your agent for both, or you can select two different individuals. You can nominate a guardian should one ever be needed for yourself or your minor children. If you have ideas for how you would like to be buried or cremated, you can make a written declaration for the disposition of remains, or you can appoint an agent to make those decisions for you. You can also enroll as an organ donor. The Franklin County Probate Court has standardized advanced directive forms available for living wills, healthcare powers of attorney, declarations for funeral arrangements, and organ donor registrations on our website under the Forms tab. One final thought. A common roadblock to planning is the fear that circumstances will change in the future. If you follow the steps provided to file a transfer on death designation or any other advanced directive, you are still the owner of your property. Nothing is transferred until after your death. And you absolutely still have the ability to change your mind and change the designations in the future as long as you have the capacity to do so. The goal is to have these decisions in place while you still have control because a little bit of planning today can save a lot of time 
cost, and frustration in the future. Thank you. Hi, Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy here. I am a Franklin County Clerk of Common Pleas Court, and in this office, we take care of documents for the Common Pleas Court in the 10th District Court of Appeals. We also issue auto titles, which is legal proof you own your vehicle. We are not the BMV. We offer you legal proof of ownership of your vehicle. Now, we are here on the Good Deeds program to tell you about an easy way to make sure that your heirs have a transfer of property on your death that is simple and painless. And I get this question all the time from folks about how do we make this happen? Well, we're here to tell you how to make it happen. And I've got our subject matter experts queued up and ready to go, and they're going to tell you how to do that. So again, Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy, Franklin County Clerk of Courts, and we're gonna take care of your vehicle title. Hello, my name is Michael Perfect. I want to share with you ways to minimize the need to be in probate court in the future. The first way is through surviving spouse law. This law allows the spouse of the decedent to take title to a motor vehicle without going through probate. An unlimited number of vehicles can be transferred. However, the value cannot exceed $65,000. The spouse can also take one watercraft and one outboard motor. The qualifying property must not be disposed of by a will. Have a transfer on death on file or joint ownership with right of survivorship. Automobiles do not include recreational vehicles such as travel trailers or motorhomes, all-purpose vehicles, off-highway vehicles, or any motor vehicle that is not used for daily conveyance, such as a bus or commercial truck. What do you need to transfer the title as a surviving spouse? You will bring a certified copy of the death certificate along with your valid Ohio ID, a surviving spouse affidavit, and an application for certificate of title. This title fee will be $15 with a dollar fee per notarization if needed, and a new title will be issued in the surviving spouse's name. Another step is to add a beneficiary to your Ohio title. A beneficiary is an individual who has sole ownership or joint ownership with right of survivorship of a motor vehicle, watercraft, or outboard motor. You can designate one or more beneficiaries on your Ohio title. The beneficiary may be an individual, a corporation, an organization, a trust, or another legal entity. Upon death of the owner, the beneficiary would submit the title, certified copy of the death certificate, and proper identification to obtain a new title in their name. To update your Ohio title, to note a beneficiary, please bring your current Ohio title, valid government issued ID, an application for certificate of title, transfer on death beneficiary form, which should include the beneficiary's full name, social security number, along with the date of birth for individuals, or an EIN if it is a trust. The title fee will be $15. The last way to minimize the need to go through the probate court is through joint ownership with right of survivorship. What is joint ownership with right of survivorship? It is a form of ownership of a motor vehicle, all-purpose vehicle, off-highway motorcycle, watercraft, or outboard motor that is established pursuant to this section and pursuant to which the entire interest in the motor vehicle, all-purpose vehicle, off-highway motorcycle, watercraft, or outboard motor is held by two persons for their joint lives and thereafter by the survivor of them. Some important things to note about rights of survivorship. Rights of survivorship can only be added to joint ownership titles. The owners do not have to be married or related. Both owners must be present to sign all title documents. The ownership on the title would be listed as John Doe and Jane Doe rights of survivorship. A beneficiary or beneficiaries can be added to rights of survivorship titles. The beneficiary would only take interest in a vehicle upon the death of both owners. If there is no beneficiary listed on the rights of survivorship title and both owners are deceased, the vehicle then becomes a part of the owner's estate. When one owner dies, the ownership transfers to a survivor, and they must come and apply for a new title in their name. If you're the survivor or the 
the noted beneficiary, if both owners are deceased, you would need to bring to the title office or mail to us a certified copy of the death certificate, the title if you have it available, application for certificate of title, and $15. You can update your title at one of our four convenient locations in Franklin County, or you can mail your documents in payment to Franklin County Clerk of Courts, Auto Title Division, 45 Great Southern Boulevard, Columbus, Ohio, 43207. Please note, mail documents must be fully completed and notarized. Please include a stamped, self-addressed envelope, and we will mail you back your title. Checks and money orders are accepted via mail. You can make your check out to Franklin County Clerk of Courts or call our dedicated title helpline at 614-525-3090. Thank you. Hi, I'm Franklin County Recorder Danny O'Connor, and I'd love to tell you about the Recorder's Office. The Recorder's Office is a government agency within the county that is in charge of storing all the public land records in the county. The most common documents that we have are mortgages and deeds from when someone buys a home. A deed is a title document that says you own real property. It's a document saying you own your home, and it's signed by the person who sold it to you or transferred it to you. Now, sometimes you'll want to add survivorship language or record a transfer on death affidavit. Doing this allows property to transfer from one owner to another without going through probate when the owner dies. There are two ways to have property avoid probate. One is a joint slash survivorship deed and a transfer on death affidavit. A joint survivorship deed is ideal for couples and or joint owners of a property. Everyone currently has ownership in that property in that case, and if one owner dies, the remaining owners continue to own the property. A transfer on death affidavit, or a TOD, is good for passing down a property from a current owner to a beneficiary. The beneficiaries do not have ownership of the property until the owner dies. If there are multiple beneficiaries and one passes before gaining ownership, they're never considered an owner. There are different kinds of deeds based on what kind of property is being transferred and who the grantor or grantees are. The most common is a general warranty deed, which is for traditional real estate. Limited warranty deeds are typical for commercial real estate, and quick claim deeds provide the grantee with no warranties or guarantees about the title quality, which means there's no protections against liens or title issues. These are oftentimes used to quickly transfer property, often within a family, such as in the case of a divorce settlement or resolving ownership issues. It really is best if you know that the title is clean and trust the grantors. A fiduciary deed is for property being transferred by a fiduciary, just as it sounds. In a lot of cases, this is an executor of an estate or a trustee, and the fiduciary is relieved of liability issues. Now, there's a process to recording all of these documents. You can add survivorship language to deeds. Uh, if you file a transfer on death affidavit, you're going to file that separately. I always recommend that you talk with an attorney or go through a title company to update a deed just to make sure everything is correct. This is a huge, huge investment and you wanna make sure everything's done well. Uh, you can get a blank deed form from the Franklin County Law Library located at 373 South High Street. Just make sure that it is filled out completely and accurately. This also means making sure that you have included your property's legal description, which you can find on the recorder's website. Make sure your document is correctly prepared for recording by following the real estate recording guide and the how to record a deed forms on the county recorder's website. Incorrect formatting or incomplete forms may be denied recording or need to be re-recorded at your expense, but we're gonna work with you to make sure that that's corrected. You will file the new deed with survivorship language with the auditor first. It will go through the typical transfer process because technically you're transferring it to yourself. If you include money for recording fees when transferring at the auditor's office, it will go straight to the recorder's office to be processed. A vital part of planning is the living will. We have a living will packet that serves as an advanced directive packet that contains three different forms. The first is the living will, the second is the healthcare power of attorney form, and then the third is an organ donation registry form. These documents are important to make sure that your end of life healthcare decisions are followed 
by your loved ones and your medical team. Once these documents are notarized or signed by two witnesses, they become legally binding. You are able to record this packet with the recorder's office for a flat fee of $40 so that it can be safeguarded and securely stored within our office. If you have any questions about any part of this process, please feel free to contact the Franklin County Probate Court, the Clerk of Courts, or the Recorder's Office. The phone number for the Probate Court is 614-525-3894. The phone number for the Clerk of Courts Office is 614-525-3090. And the phone number for the County Recorder's Office is 614-525-3930.